if you want to start with how you even came to Gainesville and stayed Well, there. of course, I'm, I was born and raised in Pensacola. I went to Emory University, uh, got my undergraduate degree there. I came to the University of Florida Law School in February of 1959. I meant to go back to Pensacola, but I never made it. Didn't, couldn't stand to leave my gators. Uh, so I've been here ever since. Uh, I'm married. Uh, my wife and I have been members at Holy Trinity since January of 1964. Is when we joined. Uh, we have two sons and two beautiful granddaughters. Uh, I have been practicing law for just over 50 years now. Uh, what drew me to Holy Trinity was the then rector, which is the chief priest at the church, which was Earl Page. And uh, I happened to go one time and heard him before seven, before 64, and I heard him preach, and I liked him and got to know him, and the rest is history. I've been there since 1964. Would you say you're a pretty active member? Do you go to services often? I go to, um, I go to church every Sunday, unless I'm out of town or fishing. <laughs> I've never been fishing. I, um, I have been uh, on several vestries, I've been senior warden uh, several times. I have served on search committees when we're trying to find a new priest. Uh, I, um, I am the uh, I am a verger at the church, which is something you can Google and find out all about. All right. Uh, and uh, I am uh, a lector. I. I you know, I do readings on Sundays and lead prayers and uh, as a lay person. Uh, and I'm also a calicifer, which is a term that means nothing to you or anybody else in the world, but it means cup bearer. We are the ones during communion who administer the cup uh, to people uh, who present themselves at the altar rail. All right, so um, those are the roles you've served within Holy Trinity. Um, you're a recipient of the Bishop's Cross. Can you tell me what that is, why you received it, a little more about that? Well, uh, the uh, your rector uh, can recommend you to the bishop uh, as a to be a recipient of the Bishop's Cross, uh, and that is awarded for uh, service mainly to the diocese, uh, although you you also have to be very active, you know, at the parish level. Uh, I am a vice chancellor of the diocese. Now, the chancellor is the the head attorney, in effect. Uh, he is an attorney for the bishop, and then uh, the bishop appoints other throughout the diocese, see, because our diocese runs uh, north of Ocala uh, all the way to the Georgia line from Jacksonville east to uh, west of Tallahassee. And so you have to have the, the, the chancellor who resides in Jacksonville has to have help occasionally. So the bishop appoints, appoints several people. I am one of those vice chancellors. What do you do as vice chancellor? Well, if if the if the uh, bishop needs some legal assistance uh, in Gainesville or some surrounding area, uh, he might he would call upon me for that help. Um, and most of the time, what the vice chancellors do would deal with contract matters with a priest or mainly with real estate issues as it relates to properties owned by the the diocese you know, churches and other properties. Um, I have been, or I was in 2012, the first uh, alternate deputy to general convention uh, in Indianapolis. The, the general convention of the Episcopal Church is held every three years. It can, it can be held more often, but it has to be held at least every three years. And, uh, and I... Uh, 
I serve on the uh, the uh, Camp Weed and Servany Conference Center, which is a conference center owned by the diocese, located just east of Live Oak, which is about an hour from here. All right. Um, so can you describe the Holy Trinity Foundation, its founding, its purpose, and its current function? Well, the foundation was actually founded in 1968, uh, and its purpose was to provide assistance to the vestry uh, in meeting financial needs from time to time that are not otherwise met by annual pledges from members of the parish. Uh, and it owns properties and it owns uh, you know, uh, stocks and bonds in, in brokerage accounts, the income of which is used for various programs of the parish. It's run by a board of, of nine trustees, two of whom uh, are the rector and the senior warden by virtue of those positions. Okay, um, so going back to um, the Bishop's Cross and your various roles at Holy Trinity, do you want to maybe talk about some of the ones that were most meaningful to you or how you even started getting involved in these positions in the first place? The, the which now? The, the All your different roles that you've served at Holy Trinity, how did you get so involved in the first place? What prompted you to be so involved? Were you well, active growing up in church? or? Well, I mean, I just felt called to do that, you know, called by God to do something. And that was, I think, what he called me to do. And I've, I've, uh, I've enjoyed it. I hope I've not displeased him or anybody else. What kind of um, religious background did you have growing up? Were you always a churchgoer? Oh, all my life. My mother was a Sunday school superintendent and teacher for 50 years. I, I was raised in the Methodist church. And in the Methodist Church, when I was a young person, we went to Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. So, so I've always been, I've always been very active in the in in. I, I'm not so much when I was in college and law school. Right. <laughs> there were of course. there were other things. Other that, things uh, going on. You know what that means. Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. I do. So, would you describe yourself as a religious or? God-fearing, or well, I think I'm a I'm religious, and I um, I fear God in a good way, though. I think He's a I think He's a, a good and a fair God. I don't think He's a vengeful God. So. All right, so I guess that leads me to the next question. Um, tell us about the day of the fire. At the the fire. The fire at the church. Well, that's an interesting. I. Uh, um, my office then was on the same street where the church is. And um, I'm sitting in my office one day, and one of my partners uh, who had been to the courthouse came, to, came in. She said, I think your church is burning. And so I got in. I mean, I raced down there, and um, it was, in fact, burning. And I'm standing over on the let me see, the Northeast 2nd Avenue, which is the entrance into the church school building, not the church itself, watching it burn. And there were a bunch of ladies there who were besides themselves. And uh, uh, I've told this story before, so nobody's going to, they've all heard it. But I'm sitting there thinking, well, we really needed it bigger, so now here's the opportunity to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. How did the fire start? How was It was started by an arsonist. Okay. A gentleman who had been in some sort of mental institution up in Tennessee and escaped. Uh, we now know two things. One, his father had alerted the... Uh, the state that his son was on his way to Florida and that it was very possible that, uh, you know, that he would be doing something like he did, which is burn churches because I was not, ours was not the only church that was burned. There were several churches in Gainesville burned 
and there were at least one or two in Ocala. Now, the second thing we learned is that he was there watching it burn. But we know that after the fact. He was ultimately caught and returned to Tennessee. I have no idea what happened after that. And did we ever find out why he burned down the church? Or uh, no. No affiliation uh, just, to Holy Trinity? Mm, no, nothing. he didn't have anything in particular against Holy Trinity. Uh, it was just, uh, you know, we were the unlucky, we were one of the unlucky ones. All right, so did you, how did you immediately get involved in the rescue efforts for the well, church? Well, I was Tyrone? then appointed uh, to head the the capital campaign to raise money to rebuild the church. And of course that took, that took a, quite a while. Uh, you know, that was in 91 and I don't think we moved back into the church. I can't remember the year, but I want, I think it might've been 94, four ish. And of course the interesting thing during that period of time is we had to hold church services in various places. But the greatest thing that happened was that First Methodist Church, which is just up the street, offered us the use of their sanctuary. And I think we, we uh, held our services there for two or three years. Uh, With we the would other do congregation? It, hmm? With the other congregation? No, no. We would go in there early in the morning and hold our services and get out of there so they could hold their services. Oh. And, uh, and in fact, if you go into the Northex at Holy Trinity, on each side of the entrance doors, you'll see two seals. One is the seal of the Episcopal Church on one side, <clears throat> and one is the Episcopal Church, I mean, is the seal of the Methodist Church. And that was done to commemorate what, mm. what the Methodists did for us uh, in that period of time. And then to fast forward for a second, and then we can go back. Recently, they were had to redo their parish hall and kitchen and so for a year or so they used our parish hall and our kitchen so we were <clears throat> able to repay in part for you know for their kindness to us when the church burned that's great so is there still there's still that relationship between and well and we we occasionally hold joint services once a year where we start there do part of the service, and then we, we process out of there back to Holy Trinity where we complete the service. So we've done that several years. That's wonderful. Okay, so you were mostly involved in the capital campaign um, to raise money for the rebuilding of the church. Right. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, it was just a struggle trying to find the, the several million dollars that we, we needed. I can't remember exactly what the total was, we didn't quite reach it, but fortunately, the foundation uh, was able to finally extinguish the debt the, that we had to, uh, uh, you know, we had to borrow money to build and then pay from pledges. Okay, so going back, um, that leads into my next question. Actually, what role did the was that the role that the foundation played? In the rebuilding, could you well, it did. It, it, well, it 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 had two roles. One was it ultimately paid uh, when pledges quit coming in. The the foundation paid off the balance of the debt, but in order to get the the uh, the loan, part of what the foundation had to do was to endorse the debt, meaning to be liable for it in the event that pledges didn't come in. So that, that one of the, was one of the things that enabled us to do that. Okay, awesome. Um, do you think that the Holy Trinity contributes to the downtown area? And maybe even you could tell me a little bit about how Gainesville has grown since you were here as a student. And if you remember even being at Holy Trinity as a student and how it's changed over the years or contributes well, to Well, I don't remember because uh, I, I didn't attend when I was a student. Uh, but of course, mm -hmm. how Gainesville has grown is incredible since 1959. That would be hard to describe. Um, if you go, uh, you know where Eighth Avenue is. Yes. Do you know where that hill going down? And there's a there's a uh, a log cabin looking house there on the right. Yes. Yes. Well, when you went to the bottom of that hill, that road ended there. 
and there was a barrier, and it was just all, there wasn't anything other mm. than the woods uh, at that point. And of course, 43rd Street over here was a, was a two-lane road, partly dirt in some places. Uh, so, you know, there were a lot of things that were that have changed, and of course, the, the university has has grown. There were there were um, temporary classrooms on the campus when I first came here that were World War II structures, because at the end of World War II, so many. So many soldiers came back and went to school that they were just overcrowded, and they had to they had to use temporary buildings. Right. Yeah. So how has the downtown area sort of grown and developed? Uh, well, the downtown area has not grown and developed as as much as you would think when you compare it with, say, like Tallahassee. Um, but um, you know, thanks to the to Ken and Linda McGurn, who probably did more for building up downtown Gainesville than anybody. Who are Ken and Linda McGurn? They're local developers. Okay. She is an attorney. Uh, she doesn't practice. They just have their own. But they built the, um, they're next to the Hippodrome. Okay. That's, that's one of their projects. Um, so they did a lot of developing downtown and, and gave it a, a brand new impetus. Uh, you know where Harry's is yes. was a furniture store, and they bought okay. that and and rehabbed it and turned it into what it is today. So they get a lot of credit for what what's going on in downtown. Do you think Holy Trinity? I, I mean, whenever I go downtown, it's a different um, vibe than other areas of Gainesville. Do you think Holy Trinity has contributed to that, or? Well, I think. Well, of, uh, we think we have. Of course, you know we are. And we do a lot, not that, I'm not sure a lot of people like the fact that there are so many homeless people in the downtown area, but we we minister those through our downtown ministry, which is, you know, helps these people get documentation that they need. There are a lot of services for these, for homeless people, but they can't access them if they don't have things like birth certificates and other such information and so we have one of our ministries is every Tuesday and Thursday uh, people can come there and we help them get that uh, you know those volunteers that do that help them get the documentation that they need have you ever been involved in any of those or? no I, I, I'm not one of those volunteers mm. okay do you guys do anything what, else, what other things does Holy Trinity do in the community what kind of Community service action. Or well, of course, you know we have we have concerts there all the time. We hold uh, once a year. We hold an interfaith uh, service where we have uh, representatives from the Jewish faith, uh, the Muslim faith, uh, and other churches uh, who come together. You know for this this service. Can you tell me a little more about that? I noticed your building's also right next to a synagogue. Huh? Your your office is right now, right next to a yeah. synagogue. I noticed that on my way here. Yeah. yeah. So can you tell me about the interfaith service? Well, it's it's just a service where the you know the people of different faiths come together, uh, you know, so that every we want the world to to know and the community and the world to know that you know we we are we're all brothers and sisters and. And we may have our differences uh, about how we're going to get to where we're going to get, uh, but we, we, you know, we're all we're all God's children. Well said. Um, can you maybe tell me a little bit about what you would think Holy Trinity's mission is? What the mission statement might be? Well, the, our mission is that we have to do what Jesus called us to do, which is, you know, to. To serve the poor, to help the sick, uh, to meet the needs of those who, uh, you know, need our help, and to, you know, it's our job to get people to know Christ. They, uh, that's what he told us to do. So how would you say that different rectors have advanced that mission since you started at the church? Well, every rector has his or her own uh, 
style. Of course, our current rector is the only woman priest ever at Holy Trinity in any position, uh, rector or huh? How do you feel? Oh, about I, that? I, it, it was. I think it was a great, great thing that happened. Uh, and uh, surprisingly, if you had said ten or fifteen years ago, it probably couldn't have happened. But there was a sea change somewhere along the line, uh, and you know, people accepted the fact that we were going to have a woman priest, and that and that, you know, being a woman has not been an issue. How many priests have you had um, since you've joined the church? How many different? You mean how many priests? different rectors? Rectors, sorry, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> well, the rector is just the is a priest, but it's just right. the chief priest. Well, let's see. There was. Uh, of course, Earl Page, when I came there, when Earl retired... Um, he was the one that drew you to the church in the first place, correct? Yes, right. Um, and then I'm having a senior moment here, <laughs> which happens all the time. David Pittman was then okay. our rector. And what do you remember about... Like what was def what would you say like was defining as their years as rector? It, it, it's hard to define. Uh, okay. It's it's you know when you're sitting there in the middle of it, you just you know what you like, you know what you like, what you like that's going on, what what you don't like, what things could improve. It's just hard to. It would be hard for me to try and, um, w with the exception maybe of Earl. Page, uh, whom I have, uh, you know, a lot of things to say about him. But um, and then w David Pittman was followed by Gordon Tremaine, okay. and then Gordon Tremaine was followed by Luann Locke. Have you interviewed her yet? No, I think actually another intern is interviewing her. She's the current rector. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Could you tell me a little bit more about Earl? I'm just interested in what you uh, say about him. Well, he was just such a he was just such a unique individual. Um, he was raised in the Baptist Church, okay. uh, and it's not for reasons that I'm ne have never been clear about. Uh, there are a lot of uh, Episcopalians who were formerly Baptist, and I you'll have to talk to somebody else about why that is so. Okay. Uh, he was, he was, um, he was ahead of his time in a lot of ways. He was very active um, when the whole issue of integration hit Gainesville and the church, not just Holy Trinity, but it, and of course he was very supportive and invited, uh, you know, our black brothers and sisters into Holy Trinity. And it resulted in some people actually leaving Holy Trinity as a result of that. Really? The interesting thing is they all ultimately came back. <laughs> so, you know, but he was just such a charismatic person. I mean, he was, it's, it would be hard to, to really, uh, give you enough information to, to give you any idea of who and what he was. It would be very difficult. He was a great man. Could you describe the like the community of Holy Trinity and the group? Would you say it's very close? Is it does everyone kinda of know we, each other? We we are we I think we are a very close group. We have you know, we have you know, there there's always things that it is a church, remember that. They're always saying that people don't like, but we are, we are great at outreach. We have so many outreach programs, and hopefully you get more information about that when you interview her. You know, and of course, we, we are very active in the Interfaith Hospitality Network. Are you, you know about that? I don't, I don't. That was a movement founded up east some years ago by a woman who discovered that there were uh, families who were displaced 
most of the time temporarily and had nowhere to go. And so what she did, she organized the churches in her area. And so what they would do is they would take these families and they would actually house them in the church and they would mm-hmm. rotate it among the churches, which is what we now do in Gainesville. So I think we we uh, house families, I think maybe four or five times a year, maybe even more, and other churches do. Some churches don't, but they contribute. The IHN has a has an executive director, and you have to qualify to do that. The other thing that we do, they mentioned about the downtown ministry, but we feed every Sunday morning uh, at uh, 7 o'clock, I think it's 7 or 7.30, anywhere from... 75 to 125 homeless people breakfast that's incredible and uh, um okay so i just want to go back a little bit more to the fire what effect do you think it had overall on your church as a community mm-hmm. as a group did people were people less active were they more active what other relief efforts were there you mentioned a little bit about the foundation but what were the other rescue efforts in the church and what do you think do you think it ultimately made you guys stronger oh i thought oh no we came out much stronger after the fire much stronger how so well it just you know we we uh part of what part of what came out of that was that we we sat around i mean we actually had you know gatherings in people's homes to decide what what are we going to do? Are we going to remain a downtown church, or are we going to move out into the suburbs, much like? And, and, and this um, and this is not any criticism in any form. You know, like Trinity Methodist, mm-hmm. is a tremendous church on Fifty Third, but their ministry is totally different from ours. Uh, and we decided we wanted to remain a downtown church. Well, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of struggles, and uh, you know when you do that, because of course people are moving into the suburbs and not downtown. And, you know, and as a result, uh, you, you know you you sometimes have issues with membership. We've not really had that. We've not really had that. What do you think the significance of being a downtown church? Why was that so important to you guys to say a downtown church? Well, because we felt like we had a ministry down there okay. to to you know to the homeless, and um, it was you know it's that building had been there since nineteen o seven, and we had been there since nineteen eighty. I mean eighteen. 1870-something, I can't remember oh, wow. now the exact. We've been there a long time. Okay, so it's a, so, yeah. the location. Do you think the location the other, is... One other thing that we do, of course, we have a companion church in Cuba. In Cuba? In Cuba. We have a, we have a big Cuba ministry, and we, we support this church, and members of our parish go there several times a year, and we take supplies to them and things that they need that they could not otherwise get. Okay, well, that's very impressive. Okay, so um, just going back a little, you mentioned them before, but I was just wondering if you could um, maybe highlight for me and explain a little further some of the roles that have been most, the roles that you've served at Holy Trinity that have been most meaningful to you. Well, of course, I guess the most meaningful one to me has been hitting the foundation all these however many years since 1968. How did you become the head of the foundation? Uh, I started it. You started it. Yeah. Okay. How did you, <laughs> how did you um, come about starting it? Uh, I just had a, mm-hmm. um, I had an interesting discussion with God. Okay. And uh, he said I needed to do something because it, that, it, it came out as a result of, a, uh, of Earl Page preaching one day, one Sunday, about the parish might need to adopt a deficit budget. Okay. And um, that didn't didn't sound right 
that that's what we ought to be doing. But if we did it, you know, then we needed to figure out some way so that that wouldn't happen again. And is that, that's the kind of law you practice? No, no, no? I practice, I, I, I practice in the commercial real estate area. Okay, okay, so, so you had a conversation with God, can you tell me a little more about that? Yeah. Well, actually, it was a one. It was a one direction conversation. A one direction conversation. Yeah, I was told what to do. You were told what to do. So you started <laughs> yeah. foundation. How did you? Um, how did you go about starting it? And who I uh, I came up with the plan. I met with Earl. I told him of of this idea, and he told me to run with it. So I, you know, I made a proposal to the vestry uh, about what I wanted to do and how it would work and what its purpose would be. And actually had some resistance to it from some members of the vestry. How come? What kind I, of I never could figure out why they were not uh, enthusiastic about it. But anyway, we got it done. Okay. And it's been going ever since. Um, so who else is on? Can you just tell me about the structure of the foundation? Well, the structure is it's run by a, a board of trustees, nine okay. trustees. Uh, two of those trustees are the rector and the senior warden by virtue of those positions. And so we operate and we meet on a quarterly basis or as more often if needed. Okay. And, um, and how do you pick the trustees? Um, well, we've the trustees that we have, the, those other than the rector, and the senior warden, we've been together probably for about 20 years now. And um, we, you know, we reelect ourselves. Okay. <laughs> so that, you know, that's how we keep that going. And we, we you know, we, uh, but we, we, we do not espouse program. That is not our function. Okay. That's up to the vestry. We, we don't... Uh, so what would you say your primary function is? Uh, to provide financial assistance when needed. You know, like the... Uh, just to the church or to the members as well? Right? No, just... Well, we well when I say just to the church, we, you know, we provide scholarship assistance to our graduating seniors when they go to college. And we provide... Uh, scholarships to summer camp at Camp Weed and serve in the conference center, you know, that sort of thing. Okay. And how do you, you do that through capital campaigns or? No, we do it through our, through our, uh, er, you know, the earnings off of our assets. Off the assets. Okay. So yeah. can you tell me a little about the properties that Holy Trinity owns and how that came to be? Okay. Well, the properties that we own, one is we own the child caring center facility on 16th Avenue, okay. and that was given to the foundation by a member of the parish, and then we allowed the Child Caring Center to use it, and they've been using it for years. <coughs> we, uh, we own uh, a parking lot right, at, you know where the old Savannah Grand property was yes. downtown? Mm -hmm. well, you know, we bought that, that city block. Oh, really? And then a parking lot across the street. Now, the old Savannah Grand property is going to become the Holy Trinity Episcopal School because we are combining the Child Caring Center operation at 16th Avenue, which is the older children and the younger children at the church itself into the one, fun one facility there. And that will become operational in the first part of 2014. Will it be a K-12? No, 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 no. It'll be pre-kindergarten. Ba okay. Babies in pre-kindergarten. That's cool. That may that may ultimately expand, but for right now, that's all it will be. That's great. And you, um, so the properties, so the properties generate revenue, or sorry. Just well, uh, well, of course, the other property mm -hmm. we own the rest of the property on the block where the church is. Some of it is rented. Okay. The Savannah Grand property was rented, but since we, you know, that's been shut down. <coughs> And uh, so it, it's no longer generating any income. So we don't get any income to speak of from our real property. From your real property, but you, from other properties is where the income Well, from comes. our stocks and bonds and our okay. portfolio. And Very interesting. 
Um, so you've left sort of a footprint around Gainesville from Holy Trinity. Huh? There's sort of been a footprint left around Gainesville. Well, a little, a little bit of one, not, not, a, not a large one. Not a large one? No. Mm. Okay, well, what hopes do you have for Holy Trinity's present and the future? Well, I just hope that we, we continue to grow, we continue to be a, an important factor in, in the life of downtown Gainesville and that we keep our outreach uh, going and that with this new school, you know, we can attract mm -hmm. uh, families uh, to Holy Trinity because ultimately the school will have 130 children. Well, let's go back to that. Can you tell me how the idea for the school started and how it's growing? The school was started years and years and years ago. And it's at Holy Trinity? Well, it started out at Holy Trinity. We then got the property on 16th Avenue, and that's when it moved to there. Uh, and it stayed there for years just alone, but it then it outgrew that. And so the older children are there, mm. the babies and the toddlers or at the church itself, in the, using the downstairs classrooms. And the ultimate goal is to have them all together in one Yeah, the place. idea is to have them all in one place. Okay. It'd be a lot more efficient. Yeah. Um, did you have these properties at the time of the fire? So you had other no. places? No, no, you didn't. You acquired them afterwards? No, the only thing we had at the time of the fire, I believe, was the 16th Avenue property. So did you acquire more properties because of the fire or the two? Houses? No, it was just it was just it, opportunities. The, the parking lot we needed for staff, <coughs> staff and volunteers, a uh, place to park when they would come there because we didn't have any, any space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is your family still involved in the church? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Children, do they live in Gainesville still? Uh, all my children, yeah, my two sons and, and my grandchildren all live here. They are not active in the church. They're not active in the church. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they don't. Did they go to the preschool or did they? Uh, no, no, they never did that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, were you with your family when they when your kids were growing up? Did you bring them to church? Were they active in the church then or? What I do what now? Did you bring? Sorry, did you um, bring your children to church when they were younger? Well, my you? sons, yes, yes. And my they, my grandchildren, and their parents have not. Uh, they're, they're not active in... in uh, Would you say you have a lot of active young members or are most of the active members? We, no, we have, we have a, a lot and are getting, I think, I think I'm beginning to see more and more young people. Um, Holy Trinity, like every church in Christendom, is, is, a, is graying. You know, we're getting older and grayer. Uh, but we're beginning to to see uh, young people. In fact, I was noticing in church yesterday that there were a lot of really young people there, and and we're getting more kids. Uh, so I, I think I think we're I think we're on the right track uh, in in attracting young families and young adults. Uh, we are planning part of our plan for our most recent. <clears throat> capital campaign is to bring on a uh, another priest or at least a youth minister. It doesn't have to be somebody that's ordained to, you know, whose specialty will be uh, older kids and young adults. Okay, so... What are, do you have any ideas of how to bring in those younger families, or have you had any part in that? Or well, I have, no, I've not, I've not really been active in that in that part of it, but uh, I think we're showing positive gains in that respect. And the school will definitely help with that. School should help, yes. Okay. Um, so currently, what are the roles that you serve in? You currently, you still have the Holy Trinity Foundation. Well, I'm st still president of the foundation. I'm the, uh, I'm the head verger for the parish. Uh, again, I'm a cupbearer and I'm a lector. Okay. Uh, and uh, I serve on the finance committee. Okay. And uh, I think that's about it. Is your wife active as well? No. No? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's just been a very personal yeah. dedication to the church. Yeah.
Yes. Um, well, do you have anything else you want to tell me about Holy Trinity? Maybe what it means to you, uh, it's important to you, what the effect of fire, how you felt about the fire when it happened? Well, I told you, I th it gave us an opportunity to build a bigger church. So you were okay with it? <laughs> <laughs> so you were okay with it? Or? Uh, well, I hated it, you know, that it, it was, it was, it was devastating to a lot of people for a lot of reason because, of course, when you rebuilt it, you, c you couldn't build it the same as before, and that upset a lot of people. But that's just, you know, we had a we had a great architect out of Boston whose specialty was uh, building churches, you know, that, with some traditional style, and she did a great job. Okay. We have a great music program. I've heard that the choir is. Yeah, very good. and we have, you know, we have a lot of uh, uh, functions there, you know, organ recitals and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. so. And do you think your role um, in your practice and your job has also um, had any sort of effect on your role in the church or? My role in what now? In your job, like your career, has that had any kind of effect on your role in the church, your participation in the church, your. No, I don't. I don't think so. Okay, yeah. I just figured I'd ask. Okay, so <laughs> is there anything else you want to say about maybe Holy Trinity and what? I'll, I mean I'll, when, after you leave, I'll probably think of a thousand things. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's always how it works, right? I think I've given you, hopefully, given you a flavor for what a great church with Sounds great ministries unique. is. Sounds very unique. Is it similar to the other ones in the diocese, diocese area? The, Have the, you been to other the churches? Diocese, yeah. diocese. I'm sorry. Oh well, you know they're all uh, they they all do different things. They're all mm -hmm. they're all trying to do the same thing, which is you know do what Jesus told us to go do. Right. And uh, some do it in different ways, and some are more successful than others. And what would you say is like? the defining way that Holy Trinity goes about that mission? What would you say is the most uh, Well, important? through those ministries that I was talking about, we are, one of the things I didn't mention is that we are um, thought of, for good or bad, uh, as being uh, the most liberal of parishes. You have four clients here, I'm sorry. Uh, in in the diocese um, you know and a lot of that is because of course the, you know we have professors at the university that are members of our parish and you know they tend to be a little more liberal than liberal in religious practices or just in general well we are a very inclusive church okay we uh, we uh, you know there's no issue with gay people in our in our parish that's very interesting in fact we have um, wow we have uh, gay members that serve on our vestry that serve in all capacities so that's never been a that's never been I mean, an issue i mean we're no never in in uh, i mean you know it would be you know i would be dishonest if i didn't say that it didn't bother some people because right. It certainly did, and and I'm satisfied still does, but it hasn't fractured the parish, and you know we all seem to get along, and That's wonderful. Uh, That's and it's not it is not an issue at Old Trinity. That's great. Well, it's it, it, again, it may be an issue for some people, but uh, as a parish, it is not. And you have the female rector, and you have a female rector. Sounds uh -huh. like a very and, unique and uh, very welcoming place. Well, yeah, we are very welcoming and I think very inclusive. Uh, that's great. Would you, were a lot of students from the university involved or? We have some students from you, but you know, we have a chapel at the university. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, I know yeah. what I know what it is. Yeah, sorry. I've been, and I've so, been it. <laughs> and so, you know, most of the students go there. Okay. Some come to Holy Trinity because they like the structure. Right. You know, they like the a, a more formal setting and uh, so. all right well thank you so much for taking your time to meet with us I really appreciate it well you're quite welcome and if you have anything else that you want to say in <laughs> concluding remarks 
You're welcome to do so. I don't, but don't. Uh, <laughs> come come try us sometime. I will definitely. Do you do you go to church? I'm actually Jewish. Okay. So I don't, but um, I, I go well, to you can God. come to our seder. We have a seder. You having a seder? We have a seder on on really? uh, Monday Thursday. And we do it, you know, some churches that do seders try to put some Christian aspects into mm -hmm. it, which, of course, is highly inappropriate. That's so interesting. And, what brought and, you and we don't do that. We, we do, a, we do a, uh, a proper seder. That's so cool. In fact, some of my Jewish friends attend. Really? Uh -huh. Well, I want to come check that out. Yeah. I, I like the part about you, the female rector, because my mom's actually a rabbi, so I think uh -huh. that's why it was okay. really cool. Now, where are you from? Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta? Mm -hmm. I went to school at Emory. Yes, I, I actually, um, I went to look at Emory, the law school for a walk around uh -huh. last spring. It was great. What brought you to Emory? What, what brought you mm -hmm. there? What, what um, brought you to Emory? I went there to be a doctor. And you came back a lawyer? <laughs> and that, la that lasted two chemis one chemistry course. Oh, God. <laughs> and I decided, <laughs> I decided I had to be something else. <laughs> Well, that's great. Mm. Um, well, thanks again. It was so wonderful to meet you, and I would love to stop by the church sometime well, thank and check you. it out. Yeah. Well, so, thank you so okay. much. Okay.